Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Champagne with Sylvia. Please welcome to the show your candidates for Emperor and Empress 30 here in Toronto, Jason Dixon Vanderbilt and Nikki Chin. Hi, YouTube. It's Jason Dixon Vanderbilt here, your candidate for Emperor 30 of the Imperial Court of Toronto. I am here hoping that you will come out and vote for me to help spearhead the organization this year and raise lots of money for charity. Uh, hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us here. Uh, I'm Nikki Chin. I'm uh, your sole candidate for Empress 30 for the Imperial Court of Toronto. And um, this year, uh, in, my, in my hopeful reign, I'm really hoping to raise a lot of money for PWA. You guys have known each other for a lot of years. We all have. How did, how did you guys end up coming to this? Let's do this together. So I've always had it in my head since I joined the organization that I really wanted to do it for the 30th reign. I don't know why. It was just always something that I thought, yeah, that's what I want. And I couldn't think of someone better to ask. When Nikki started to get involved again next year, I thought, fantastic. Like, here is someone who I know is going to put in the work, who can actually garner a crowd out at events, who knows how to work the mic, and can really engage with the community. So I thought, let me approach her, see if she might want to take this journey with me. So, and here we are. And I said yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> Learning what the Imperial Court of Toronto had to offer and what they were all about made me want to do it. I didn't know when it was going to happen. I didn't know. I I didn't I didn't plan on the thirtieth to be honest with you. Um, however, what I mean, a lot of people will you know support this. I just need a kick in the butt. And this was my kick in the butt. The Imperial Court of Toronto started around 1984. Um, and it is part of the bigger international court system. And each city throughout North America, um, each chapter elects an emperor and empress each year to spearhead and pick a charity of choice, which they raise money for. Um, but it's also a social organization to bring people together. And it really started um, during the HIV AIDS crisis in the 80s to bring a lot of people together. And they really did raise the initial dollars to build a lot of hospices and um, deliver a lot of care that needed to be delivered during that time. What's important of that whole thing is that the AIDS crisis wasn't helped initially through government and through um, altruistic purposes. Well, actually, it was through that, but it wasn't through government. It was through grassroots. It was through the men and women before us that started and made a difference. Um, I'm sure you'll see in just a moment. Um, we did a show earlier tonight, and uh, we had a question and answer period. It was a lot of fun. One of the questions that were brought up was violence, gay bashing, and uh, sort of the intrusion that happens within a community, a gay community. It's a big cross that we have to bear. Where do you guys want to go with that? How, how do you want to spotlight? The Imperial Court of Toronto will support uh, community members who, if they want to do an event that is promoting awareness to violence that happens a, in our own country, or B, also in other countries where it's very dangerous to be out and open and gay, um, we would very much hands down support those uh, initiatives. Um, so if members want to come out, they want to hold an event, we will help organize, we will co-host. And make sure that the, the message got out that this is the event and that these are the issues that are still going on elsewhere. Um, that's also important. To, as, if it's important to a member of our community, it's also important to us because we are elected to represent all of our community members. And that's what I think everywhere. That, and I think that's what we would want to accomplish. There's, there's all kinds of sort of factions of a community. And the gay community has that. What are you guys bringing to that? Like who, how are you bringing those people in? Um, that's actually... Uh, a really great question. Um, the community is growing. Uh, like you said, there's so many different aspects of the community, so many different organizations, so many different things happening around the city. And I mean, we're 
two people a part of this organization, but this organization spans all North America. So getting the community involved and getting the people that we know involved and then more, or and then some, will help us go to all, like, uh, attend anything and everything um let it be known that we are around we are there for them and they are there for us and we know what they do it's it it's the whole social aspect of this and it's it's wanting to talk to them and communicate with them teach them guide them um learn from them um uh, being part of the youth uh i want to i i'm a little bit of an old soul inside and uh and i want to i I want to bring the youth back into it. Bringing the youth in can be very difficult because it's comfortable before. How, how, do you, how are you going to do that? Um, I definitely think that educating the youth on what has transpired um, is a huge component of what we want to accomplish. But I think it's also putting a new spin on an old idea, um, just making it fresh, making it current, make it relevant for the new people to our community to really engage them and have them come out and pull them in, draw them in, and also make it be a warm, inviting space for them. Because, you know, sometimes it's hard to break into a new group. We've all been there. Um, but I think that's the idea that Nikki and I have, is to really be as inviting as we can be for everybody to come out. You know, not everyone has a million dollars that they can throw around to do the, the, the traveling that is really um, prevalent within the court system. So we want to make sure that we are also doing a lot of community-based events that they can come out and still feel a part of the organization. I want to go to this. I want to reach out to the schools, uh, the universities, and the colleges, and I want to. I, I really, I really like public speaking, and I think to stand up there in front of um, young kids from the country, from small towns. Uh, I mean, I, I, I came into Toronto from a very, from a very small town as well. And I, it was brand new to me. I was scared. I didn't know anybody. Um, I, I want to let them know that there is somewhere safe anywhere you go in this community. And I, I just want to, I want to reach out to the universities and colleges for that because there are a lot of young, um, kids that go, th uh, that go there straight from high school. And and they don't know because they're living on residence. They don't know where to go, what to do, who to talk to. And I want to educate them and tell. I want to guide them to the right places to go. That's 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 one of my priorities for this for this hopeful year. So please, please do come out and vote. Make sure your voice is heard. Voting dates are September 29th from 5 to 8 p.m. at the 519. And the main voting day is October 1st, 2 to 6 p.m., also at the 519. It's very important that as a community member, you have your voice heard because we hope to represent you as a community and raise funds for our community. Um, I want to thank you guys so much for the entire evening. Thank you guys so much for, for showing up tonight and tuning in. Uh, go out there and make this world a better place, and we'll see you guys next time. Good night.